Hello everyone, my name is Ian, the part-time Dungeon Master. I'm joined again, once again, with a interviewing session. This time with the player who plays Hello. the monk with the most, Mr. Mewtwo. Uh -huh. Do uh, I yeah. have the most? <laughs> well, you have the most monk levels. Oh, so, oh that's very true. <laughs> uh, mind introducing yourself, maybe even plugging a bit of what you do, aside from play in my weird campaign. Okay, uh, my name's Ramon. Um, I go by Ramen. I have a YouTube channel named Bomb and Ramen. Uh, you can find me on Twitter with the same name, and I have a page on Facebook, but I don't really upload those much. So mostly just YouTube. <laughs> He's bad about social media, just like I am. Yeah, I'm really bad at it. I'll leave a link to your YouTube channel though down in the description. So those of you listening, just go down there, click on it, leave a nice comment, subscribe. Uh, color yeah, your think... boogers for the day. I I don't know. I'm not good. Yeah, if you like video games, then I'm where to go. You'll you'll see games. I'll, I'll play them. I'll talk over them, and and I hope you stay entertained. <laughs> That's pretty much all we ever try to do. Even <laughs> yeah. me, it's like if I can at least entertain one person, then I'm doing good. Hey, that that's a good goal. I'm I'm still trying to get that goal. If, I, I feel like every customer that shows up is very unsatisfied. But <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we I'm work kidding, in uh, we work in customer service, so uh, oh yeah, that's that's no fun either. Yeah, you see, out of all the players, uh, Ramon here or Mute here and Mizuki are the only ones who have actually worked with me or have worked in the same building as me. Oh. Uh, you're back in the post area, so you don't get to deal with customers directly. Yeah, thankfully, <laughs> even though it's it has its own set of stresses. Like now we have time limits and things like that. Nothing. The I kind of wish I could go back to dealing with customers, honestly, because <laughs> I it's like all right now here goes this call and you got a forty eight hour turnaround. And then it's like okay, well not everyone got to these calls, so now it's technically a twenty four hour turnaround, and then they'll add calls that are 24 hour turnarounds are like which one are more important <laughs> and then here's one with 12 hour turnarounds but it's not like we work 24 hours a day so technically every call is a 12 hour turnaround and they just hate us they want us all to die they're waiting for <laughs> us to quit i can tell um part of the thing is like i pointed it out a couple of times is that the, that whole area is not being utilized correctly not at all and i'm like is i want to go back there and like restructure it but at the same time it's like i know i'm gonna piss so many people off if i do because it's like, you know, actually, and I'm sure you've heard about this. I'm, I'm sure everyone loves hearing us talk about work <laughs> in this D&D &D video. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, they're actually closing um, the Valley Building. I don't know if you knew about that. I did. I, I heard about that weeks ago. And I didn't yeah. give much stock to it at first because normally whenever they close the building for cleaning like or like anything, it's like, oh, hey, you know, Valley Billy had, a, had a, an outage or, oh, hey, they're cleaning it or something they went on like this big rampage it's like oh no they're closing it down and i'm like really yeah. come on guys i've been hearing this for like four years now could just <laughs> stop well, yeah this time is real yeah this time is actually real <laughs> so i feel and... kinda, i kind of like feel like a dick for not putting stock into it <laughs> but the reason why i bring it up this time is uh the, um, the area that i work in we're all supposed to be compressed to the back section when you first walk through the doors and a lot of those people are going to come into the areas so now where i sit will be sat by someone from that building oh yeah, yeah everything on our side is going to be rearranged soon as well because i think we're getting like 60 agents in total Ooh. but enough of that boring work stuff of dealing with yeah that's not what you're here to see co-workers that never stop talking and complaining about whatever <laughs> yeah. oh my god i almost snapped at some of my co-workers today <laughs> i just couldn't take it anymore it's so like please for the love of god shut up so someone want to say i want to i want to say this on camera okay so i've been watching all your interviews mm -hmm. and i've noticed that my character is always in the background yes <laughs> so i i was wondering will i be in the foreground and background this time. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to put Tulip back there, but you're not really going to see all of Tulip. You're just going to like see her head or maybe like the top of it because <laughs> you you uh, awesome. you took the stool with you. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I figured it's like, yeah, it's like a, it's like a, you know, a mixing studio, you know, sitting back there balancing the sounds and everything. So I was like, hmm, yeah. who would do no, the best I, I back felt, there? I felt a little bad because I, I didn't know if you were doing it by order. So uh, the person that was in the background was going to be the next person to come up. But I feel like I might have been unavailable for the next interview. So I was just, just kind of <laughs> stuck in the background the whole time. I don't know. It's just for some reason my mind went like, hey, you know, Ramon's got a channel, so he knows about balancing sounds and stuff. I'll just stick him back there because, like, he's okay. balancing everything. <laughs> okay, I really didn't know what it, why I was always there. Yeah, that, that's just the only reason. Um, I'm sorry if you thought it was like a waiting list and it's like, oh man, <laughs> when is he going to get to me? <laughs> no, I, I just felt like I kept missing my chance. Like, I, I wasn't, like, I, I didn't feel like I was. Um, uh, how I try to word it? Oh, I felt like I was holding you back. Oh, <laughs> like no. I just, uh, uh, okay. Like I said earlier before we started recording, a large portion of it was my fault because it's like, I need to get this done, I need to get this done. And then something else comes into my lap and I'm like, crap, I need to get this done. <laughs> you, you remember when the interviews first, when you first announced you were going to do interviews, I was the first one to say, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, I messaged you one time and it's like, there was no response. I'm like, hey... Okay, so so for everyone out there listening, Discord hates me. I I don't get notifications for my messages. I and I, and I have everything set for for push notifications, everything. But when when I get a when I get a direct message, it only like I I'll, I'll go into the app and it sometimes it'll have the the one or two or however many, many messages I have, but. For the most part, it doesn't. So I, I usually have to click in my messages to see who's messaged me. I don't know why it does that. Yeah, I don't get it. Discord just hates me. <laughs> but we've got all that figured out now. You know, I've got your phone number. I can text you. Like, get on. Yeah. Provided you don't fall asleep. Man, I was, <laughs> I was the sleepiest person on the planet that day. I don't know what. <laughs> I, I think I went to uh, Steak and Shake. Mm. And had a burger, came home, fell asleep for probably six or seven hours. Like I, I woke up at seven, and I I missed hanging out with a few people. Like everyone's just like, "Where where have you been?" I was like, "I was asleep. <laughs> I slept good." <laughs> well, maybe I didn't sleep good. I think I made a few mistakes, but <laughs> one way or another, I slept, and then I slept again. Oh, that sounds like a good lazy day, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it was good if it wasn't for obligation. <laughs> <laughs> Obligations. Who has those? Yeah. All right, adults. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so with you joining me and the others uh, in this weird adventure of mine, of the Source King campaign, uh, you had mentioned before that you had some other D&D experience. And yeah. Why don't you talk some and... about that? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll try to go through all of them to the best of my knowledge. There was, let's say, seven years ago. That's just a good estimate. Uh, I played played a game with a guy. Uh, we played in, in our local comic book store. Uh, we had about three sessions, and the guy moved. Oh. So, like, okay, bust. Uh, we had, let's say, a good four years after that. Uh, another guy came around. Uh, we played a good three sessions. Then he moved. And about two years after that, um, it, it happened again. But luckily, on the fourth try, and this was within the same two-year period, I finally joined a session. And like we played frequently. Um, I, we played, let's say, a good 20 sessions. You know, good solid 20 but the guy started showing up late, so we just started all started hanging out, and eventually it got to the point where he only came over to hang out, and eventually he stopped coming over, and we lost that session. Wow. <laughs> That's so, nice. yeah. So right, about so, a year. I'm sorry to interrupt. So, uh, so wait, local comic book would that be Heroes up in Noonan? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I got uh, I made some enemies up there. 
<laughs> How do you what? make enemies? Okay, so uh, I like Magic the Gathering. It is yeah. a pastime of mine since I was a, a wee lad. My brother taught me how to play and everything. And it was during the Innistrad block. Um, so Heroes, uh, I guess like everyone who signed up for the one of the tournaments for Innistrad was like, okay, we're doing zombie-themed. So everyone built zombie-themed decks. So I built an anti-zombie deck. <laughs> it was standard. It used humans and just a few angels. One angel of which is uh, Angel of Glory's Rise. If it comes onto the battlefield, it exiles all zombies from the game. Uh, and brings all humans from your graveyard back to the battlefield. Well, it doesn't sound broken at all. Oh, no, it, was, it worked great. <laughs> and uh, people didn't like that. And yeah. then the next tournament after that one, I ran a perfect mill deck. And uh, it had Ooh. like four creatures in it. Each one was like had an ability to where it's like, I place a land, you mill your top two cards. Or if it takes damage, you mill your top two cards or something like that. Yeah. And it was just nothing but mill and no one could I hate those decks. <laughs> I do too. That's why I made it. <laughs> and they're like, if you ever play that deck again, we are never playing with you again. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I guess uh I guess I can't play that anymore. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. Uh no, you're good, you're good. I I'll, I'll just gonna get to uh, the the last um D and D campaign, which is basically how I got to your campaign. So I had a session started about a year ago. I think it was a year ago. Let's say like a year, year and a half. Um, playing with a few friends, I was like, "Oh yeah, I miss D and D. Like I haven't done this. Oh, so we were just playing, and the house that we were using, they moved. Oh. <laughs> so I just have this this curse where." <laughs> D and D and people moving. I, I really don't understand how this keeps happening to me, but <laughs> I I start frantically searching for for a new session because like like it was really fun and like the the DM like he was still available, but you know we just didn't have enough people to play. So I was trying to search for parties. He was trying to search for parties. And, you know, I started asking around at work and that's when people told me that you do D and D. So that's how, like, that's when I came to you and asked you about it. And like, now we are where we are today. <laughs> and that also being said, um, the guy that I was DMing with, we, um, actually did find a group. So now I DM with him or I, um, I play with him on Saturdays where I play with you on Sundays. Yeah. So I'm glad everything was able to work out with that as well. Yeah. <laughs> um. So with all your you know D and D experience, do you have any dungeon mastering experience at all? No, I I don't think I'm up for that challenge. Honestly. <laughs> eh, that's, well, you know, got to start somewhere. Yeah, and okay, it's not the it's not the being the controller of the world part that uh, that that I'm scared of is more so coming up with a story. And I, I know they have their own original stories, but once they run out of those, then I'm just kind of like, okay, well, uh, I guess they, uh, you can go to the bar, I guess. Oh, there <laughs> might be a Canyon you can raid. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just couldn't think of a full campaign. Uh, I have my own tricks for that, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, between the, you know, the magic gathering cards, using that as a, as a quick adventure build uh, yeah. to uh, pulling pieces from uh, players' backgrounds and stuff. Uh, because I've asked this of everyone else as well. What is your favorite type of cheese? Honestly, it depends. Okay? So, I, I almost want to say sharp cheddar. But uh, at the same time, provolone is really good. Provolone is really good. Yeah, provolone is so good, and I, I really love Philly cheesesteaks. And provolone oh, goes on Philly yes. cheesesteaks uh, with uh, I love with bell peppers and mushrooms. Yeah, oh man, <laughs> don't even get me started. <laughs> I, okay, I've been to Philadelphia and had a real Philly cheesesteak. Okay, like how are those? Of, like the size of a small baby and filled with joy. Ah, uh, 
Okay, how do they compare to that place, Mama's? Mama's, while well, good, no, nowhere, nowhere as good as a real Philly. Okay, see, that's, of all the Phillies that I've had so far, that's actually my favorite one. Yeah, I, I was uh, passing through Philadelphia on my way up to, ah, oh, shoot, where was I going? I can't remember. It was so long ago, but I just happened to be in Philadelphia, and I saw a, a sign that says, uh, the best Philly in Philadelphia. What the oh, heck is a Philly? That's a bold claim. I know, that's a bold claim, especially considering I saw the sign for like three other places as well. So, <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, you know, this is something that people take very seriously. So I figured, you know, I'll try a Philly from Philadelphia and I tried it and that was the most amazing sandwich I've ever had. Uh, and I just fell in love now, with the sandwich from then on. Now I know that I need to do that. I need to go there. <laughs> it was an expensive trip. I remember that much. I just can't remember where I was going. I want to say I was visiting family in New York or something. You um, know, it was crazy because I always hear that a lot of places that advertise that they are the best in this sort of food usually aren't. Like, I hear that, um, you know, Buffalo has horrible wings or um, <laughs> oh, like Cuba doesn't have good Cubans. Like, <laughs> like things like that. Well, I've eaten at Buffalo Wild Wings twice, and like I have to say, both times, I was not very impressed. Now, yeah, I don't eat wings very not... often, so... I, I've i been to Buffalo Wild Wings, let's say a good 60 times since they've opened. Now, I know that sounds like a lot for someone to randomly just go there, but I love free food. <laughs> and when they opened, I was one of the first 100 to stay outside and get free coupons like it was um a thing of wings once a week oh, wow. so yeah so i that's the reason why i went to buffalo wild wings and about 10 trips in i said if i didn't have these coupons i wouldn't come here <laughs> now i've i've uh, gone to star wars destiny uh tournament at one place and uh, another time I went to a Magic the Gathering Regional Championship. Got my ass handled at both. Um, but uh, both times, it's like I ended up going with some friends. And we you know, went and ate at Buffalo Wild Wings. They really like wings. I like wings, too. I just don't eat yeah. them because they make me gassy. So <laughs> it's like, Wings make you gassy? For some reason, Buffalo Wings make me gassy. I that love is... them. If I'm driving alone in the car, oh, hell yeah. I'm, I'm eating me some, you know... <laughs> Some garlic parmesan wings. Those are my favorite ones. Yeah. I will be like farting up a storm to where if I crack the windows, it's going to be like tear gas coming out or something. I've never heard that before. Not, not from wings. Yeah, it's, it's something weird about me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, but like both times, it's like I'm sitting there, I'm eating the wings with my friends, and you know, they're like enjoying them. And I'm like, these, these are not very good wings. Yeah. It's like, I've had better homemade wings than this. There's well, there's this one little restaurant in LaGrange. Uh, it's like teriyaki's or something. But they have some really good wings, and they're cheap, too. Yeah, that's a city I need to explore more of. Eh, it's got its good places and bad places. Yeah, I mean, like, I've, I've been through it plenty of times, but I've never... I've never said, let's go and eat at a... Well, scratch that. I did that one day. One day, I decided to, like, go in the square and uh, just, like, look for places. Because I love, I love food. Like, I I love to go out and explore different foods. That's, I'm, I'm not big on social media, but I am active on Snapchat. <laughs> not as Bob and Ramen, but as myself. And people know that I am always going to different food places all the time the you ever you ever on facebook and you're like oh like that looks really cool like i'd i'd like to go there oh but it's only in new york but you but guess what like there's a place similar in atlanta and you and you just never know until you you just look for it uh yeah i, mean, I ate at the vortex in atlanta one time yeah it was really good to me i, 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 I love it. the vortex like more than just the food but the atmosphere and yeah I used to want to be a competitive eater. I used to watch Man vs. Food, and I was like, Adam Richman, you're so awesome. And uh, 
you remember the the Asian guy Kobayashi that did the hot dog eating challenges? Oh yeah, yeah. And then um, and now Joey Chestnut has blown him out the water. But I used to I used to like follow these guys, and I was like, oh yeah, I want to do that. So I I started just eating and like trying to fit as much in my stomach, and I I got really good. And I also got really big. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say so, yeah. you're you're definitely a food guy because you're kind of a big guy. Yeah. Well, here goes the here goes the funny part. Okay, I um shortly shortly after that when I decided that I wanted to lose weight instead, like I lost lost a bunch of weight, like lost over a hundred pounds. Hmm. Um, I was a fairly slim fella, and now I'm actually bigger than I was when I was trying to be a competitive eater and I can't eat, eat nearly that amount, but it's, it's because of how inactive we are at that job. Oh yeah. The, the, the job is a very sedimentary job. Yeah. But, um, it's, it's funny. Like I'm probably one of the few big guys that like to exercise. So, I, I mean, I like going to the gym. Yeah. Uh, I don't see. I don't like the gym. The gym to me, is um, organized exercise. I know that sounds weird, but where where you can get on a treadmill at the gym, I prefer to jog on the ground, and you get a better you get a better workout that way. Like ex- treadmill is cheating. You're you're running. Well, you're not even running. You're you're moving in place while the while the belt moves your feet backwards. Where when you're on the ground, you're propelling your body forward, and you're running up hills, uh, you're running from dogs, you see a little deer, you know, you see, I've seen otters, <laughs> I've seen a squirrel with, with uh, all the hair off its tail, <laughs> like, <laughs> just weird things like that. But, see, the I, problem is, is like, I live out in the, out in the country, so me going jogging is a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. People around here are I, crazy. But when I go to the gym. There's a few places to make it worth jogging where, where I stay at. I used to go to Peachtree City. And jog the 10k trail all the time, oh, and wow. that's where that's where all the good scenery was at. Yeah, when I go to the gym though, I'm normally on the bike when I decide to do cardio. So yeah. I, I put my headset in, I put on some music, you know, and then just kind of like my brain turns off and goes off into like la la land, and my body just you know stays at whatever I set it at, which is normally about a uh, hundred rotations per minute for the the pedals. And my heart rate goes up to maybe like 152, 155, somewhere between yeah. there. And I just stay at that for 20 minutes. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I um I owned a bike for the purposes of exercising. And the tires go flat just by sitting sedentary for about two days. So, uh, and I never, I never replaced the tires or anything, so... It's just rust, you know. <laughs> but I, I wish I would have kept up with it. Yeah, for me, for me, exercising and such, it became more of I would just, I just wanted to feel better about myself. So I was yeah. like, I'll sign up for the gym and I'll start going to the gym. I'll never be under two hundred pounds again, but you know, I'm, I'm okay I, with that. I can get there. I because I I just recently started working out again because they have the walk around the building thing. So like, I'm, I'm doing that. Oh yeah. And, um, occasionally I'll just walk anyway, but I have to get back into the shape that I was, where I can actually jog a 10k. But I could probably jog a mile now since I've been walking so much, or either that or like if I was if I can't, then I'd be able to in a week once I start actually jogging again. Yeah, I can see that. Uh... I don't know. I, I kind of hate jogging. I hate the treadmill. I know that much because I, I've got bad knees. So yeah. Oh, but, um. Here we are talking about all this exercising. The D and D show. The most derailed interview. <laughs> the most derailed interview ever. I mean, I completely agree. But at the same time, you know, it kind of shows that you know D and D is very inclusive when it comes to you know people from different walks of life. Um, yeah. I've met some people that are like super punky and, you know, I've got the, the dyed hair mohawk thing going on. Yeah. You know, the muscle guy who's like, you know, hitting the gym almost every day and working out as much as possible. 
Yeah, then, uh, I've I've seen girls that you wouldn't expect them to put down their makeup long enough to even think about holding a die, but here they are playing D and D. Like you, you just really never honestly like it. You shouldn't judge a book by its cover, and like everyone kind of does it, but you you really shouldn't. I get the feeling like everyone's got like an inner nerd or a yeah. geek, and you just have to accept it and let it out every now and then. Yeah, and I'm I'm a huge nerd and geek. Like I'm I'm the guy when I was growing up, I was like, oh, I'm the guy that keeps video game the video game industry, you know, rolling. <laughs> <laughs> like they they brought anime over here for me because I'm the one that's watching it. Like no one else was talking about it or. I, I didn't know anyone else that was playing games. And uh, I, when, you know, I got a little bit older and people were like, oh, that's dumb. You shouldn't be doing that. I was like, well, I like it. And I don't care what you say. <laughs> they like nowadays, like everyone talks about it. It's like, I used to get made fun of that for, the, for you know, playing Yu-Gi-Oh or, you know, playing this game. I mean, I'll still, make, Ball. I'll still make fun of you for playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I hate that card game. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh is so fun. Well, hold on, scratch that. Yu-Gi-Oh used to be so fun. No, no, even back back in the day when it first came out. No, no. Oh man, I, I, I got I got to read a paragraph and a half to understand one card. Not to mention, it's like okay, we're gonna play a game. Start, I play okay. this creature. Okay, what happens? Uh, don't worry about it. Fine. <laughs> I kill it with, uh, I don't know, a trap card or something. Oh, you activated its special ability. Turn one blue eyes white dragon. I attack you directly. Well, fuck you. <laughs> the, the complicated cards didn't show up until probably the sixth um, the sixth set. Yeah. That was when oh, they started then, getting a little complicated. Oh, and then the, the, you know, the ruling of like, you know, oh, it's always a one-on-one -on -one fight and the monster, you know, heals after every fight. So that way you can't gang up. Bullshit, I can't gang up and kick its ass. We do that all the time in Magic the Gathering. I can send <laughs> five guys to stop, like curb stomp one motherfucker. Nope, can't do that in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. See, that's what confused me back when I uh, started playing Magic. Because I, I played Yu-Gi-Oh first and got into Magic... Um, because I'm, I'm assuming that you are well versed in magic. Oh, yeah. So it was when um, the affinity for artifacts, um, when that dropped, like, I forget what the set was called, but. Um, I, I remember that time, but I don't remember the set name. Yeah. But yeah, that was when I started. And I was still playing Yu Gi Oh! Like, I started Yu Gi Oh! Um, Metal Raiders, which was the second second expansion the second set and so that was a good let's say four year gap i guess and the rules didn't make sense to me it's like how come how come you can use all these creatures to kill my guy like it's, <laughs> like I, yeah it, it's hard to play multiple card games and just keep all the rules in check uh i managed somehow i don't know well uh... Especially with D and D, you know, D and D's got like, well, there's O D and D first edition, second edition, third edition, three point five, fourth edition. Then there's also Pathfinder, which is an offshoot of three point five. Yeah. And then there's fifth edition, and I've got all that rolling around in my head. So that's eight different editions rolling around in my head at any given time. Yeah, that that's too much. <laughs> I can't. I would just stick with. The one, like, I feel like everyone would just move to 5th edition. Like, that seems to be the, what everyone is used to now. Uh, uh, I'm in a Facebook group uh, that's all about 1st edition. And oh. it's, it's pretty healthy. And, you know, like, the, the group still does really good. They post regularly. And they still play 1st edition. And it's mostly people who are interested in the old ways of D, D or like old army veterans who are just too jaded to like let go of the past <laughs> but i still know how thaco works and oh my god is it a migraine every time i look at it but i know how it works yeah i i've only heard the horror stories of first edition um, yeah yeah fifth edition well, like, like... i'd probably play a session that way just to if there were like a retro themed session <laughs> where we're stuck in the past and we have to play in first edition. <laughs> but I, I don't know if I can keep playing that way. Pretty sure uh pretty sure Regnus would kill me. 
Um, <laughs> you know, that's actually a good idea. <laughs> if we get sent back to the past and play first edition. <laughs> uh, I might do like a one shot using first edition rules, but. Oh. Okay, that's what um that's what the uh, uranium's for. That's what happened. <laughs> I mean, you still have it. Yeah, <laughs> it's slowly making you sick, but you still have it. <laughs> Is my hair falling out? Any? It's getting grayer. Oh man. Oh. I want to hold on to it as long as possible until <laughs> until I just need to get. I don't know. I don't know if I actually will. If. If it really starts messing with my stats, then... <laughs> well, no oh, one's tried goodness. casting magic on you yet. Yet being the key word, so... Oh! Oh, no! Because <laughs> radiation does technically mess with magic, so... Alright. Oh, uh, you weren't there for the last session, but by the way, you did get your uh, gauntlets. Uh, they're going to be adding plus one to your unarmed strike damage. Alright, Awesome. So, whenever you punch, you add a plus one. Nice. Uh, but they're essentially bone gauntlets that you wear. Yeah. I um, remember those. Oh, boy. Uh, which, by the way, um, speaking of your character and stuff, what made them decide that they need to leave their homes behind, especially considering your character Mute Who, which, if for those in the audience who don't realize it yet, he's named after a Pokemon. Take a guess. Yeah, <laughs> it, um, it felt like a good pun to use. <laughs> a tabaxi monk named Mute Who that shoots radiant bolts of energy. Yeah, mm. <laughs> does he sound legendary? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay, what made so... him decide to leave their homes, especially saying they're from the far distant lands uh, of Hersad in the southern area of Rinsali? The, the sands okay. and all that fun jazz. Okay, since since we're here doing this, I'll give you the the backstory, and people will probably hate it. <laughs> it. It's not an original backstory, but okay. So, who's familiar with Batman? All right. <laughs> now he's not necessarily based off Batman, but if you are a fan of Dragon Ball. There's a character named Jiren. And that character's backstory is basically Batman. But my character's backstory is basically Jiren. <laughs> so it that that's basically the the gist of it. He he his parents were killed and he wanted revenge. So um were were his in his story, he assembled a team and like tried to like fight. Uh, I, I can't remember exactly how it goes. I think he like tried to fight the the guy that destroyed his town and everything. Yeah, and, and I think he got defeated. And then he said like strength is the only thing that matters. Has a new team, and that's kind of like my thought process is like. Where Jiren now has the Pride Troopers, I now have you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. but then you find out that your dad's not dead. Yeah, <laughs> he's alive. Which but... I was kind of, I was kind of hoping that it would go in that direction. I wasn't a hundred percent sure. You also found I... he might be slightly crazy, but you know. Yeah, that's that's why I worded it like I I left the window open for you to do it. Cause I said I said the mom was dead, but the dad was missing. And I was like, hopefully he'll take that as like the dad could be alive. Now, I didn't know that people would be seeing him. <laughs> like, that's what threw me off. They're like, oh, oh yeah, he he's been here. He he did a couple things. I was like, well, where the where was I? I don't know if we can cuss. I'm I'm not going to though. <laughs> <laughs> I already have like three times. I haven't you been listening? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a I have a problem with cussing and I I don't do it when we play D D and like I'm trying to be good, I'm trying to respect the channel. On my channel, I have definitely done it way too much and I'm trying to I'm trying to tone it down. And especially the partners that I have, like especially the, the main one that has been there for um, a good half of the videos. 
he just won't stop. I'm just like, hey, you wanna, you wanna come down to cuss a little bit? Like, well, why should I? This is the way I talk. And, <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of understand both sides of that. Um, I've tried to curb mine as much as possible, especially when my son's around. So I find, like, new ways of cursing. You know, instead of saying, you know, motherfuckers, I might say, you know, son of a mo- uh, monkey fudgers or something. <laughs> or I, um, I've turned a lot of my cussing into piss. <laughs> <laughs> you puddles of monkey piss. Yeah, I'm just like... And it's always... You know, you, you can tell, like, I'm purposely saying piss is not part of my regular vocabulary it doesn't it doesn't flow out the mouth i'm just like oh I'll piss like i'll say it like that <laughs> what <laughs> it's like i'm just trying not to <laughs> just trying not to be like you know excessively screaming f-bombs and so on yeah and like oh um, I'll, I'll, I'll throw a shit out there i mean like they're, they're saying shit on tv now so yeah well, I still, I still try not to do it that much. I, I have to say our, our, uh, our campaign's at least a PG thirteen. Yeah. So. Yeah, you you only get one f bomb, and then after, you know, you got to get that R. <laughs> so, uh, more about mute. Where did exactly did they learn their craft? Because he's a monk. Um, I'm not sure if I actually went over this with you. Now that I think about it. Okay. Um. So, basically, he, he just he just comes from a small village. Uh, they are kind of self-taught, like they teach within their village. Everyone in like in my in my head canon, everyone in the village is a monk. Um, there were select few that studied alchemy, and my dad was the um, I guess the leader, if that's what you want to call it. Or the the head teacher of alchemy. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't really thought this part out, but I'll I'll make it canon. Um, he used to go out and try to teach alchemy to other people in different lands because he found that to be the true um, true way to you know gather resources and whatnot. So there were lots of people that saw him as a false prophet and that's eventually what led to the people ransacking his house and you know killing his wife and kidnapping him All right and i know we went over it before once is especially since hersad is no longer its own kingdom now it it was conquered by rin sali uh one of the neighboring kingdoms and they they have a very big you know no alchemy kind of thing going yeah. yeah, the God King of the Sands is not a very pleasant person, especially towards uh, Tabaxi. So, but we're so cuddly. Yeah, but he's racist. <laughs> so, uh, Why do all racists hate cuddly things? Uh, I don't know. Ask ask the people in Zelnir. They're they're worse. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the neighboring kingdom to Aloria that you guys had been in for a long time, uh, Zelnir. Uh, they literally, like the orcs you guys dealt in with the se- in the second session, they are, they were literally uh, refugees from Zelnir. They were forced wow. out of their lands by the people of Zelnir because they wanted everything non-human out, everything magical out. Oh, so they're just pure human. Yeah, they they uh, they're not very good people. <laughs> I mean. All right. They're the ones that genocided the uh, the moon elves, so they're not good people. So, no one in our group can just walk in there and <laughs> and be good. I mean, Ragnus and Alvar might be able to get by with it until someone realizes that they're Azamar. Then there might be issues. So I don't know. Their their wings don't do they always show or is only it... when they want them to. Okay, so yeah, I guess they could pull it off. Um. By the way, what do you hope to see in uh, the current campaign? Uh, current campaign. Uh, current campaign. Current campaign. God, I'm losing my ability to speak. <laughs> the the thing that my head keeps going to is <laughs> the the I, I forget which session it was. It was a few back, but you start to talk about the wanted posters, and uh, I hope we just go on a 
like a witch hunt. I want us to. Oh, for Oric the thief. Yeah. <laughs> and I keep trying to to hint at it at um, like just through like the the, the sessions when I was trying to steal the panties because I you know mute obviously is a bit of a lecher, but oh, he yeah. had a and like he wants. He wants to win the award. He wants to just hunt all these guys down. I mean, the party did briefly meet him, but he was in disguise as someone else. So, wait did did we know that? Uh, not until like the end of the session, when the the party saw him again, and he ripped off the uh, fake mask he was wearing that was disguised as someone else's face, <laughs> and Regnus wait. realized it, and he was like, "Son of a bitch!" <laughs> wait, was I there for that one? No, you were, uh, you had something going on and you couldn't make it. I remember that much. Oh, that might have been like the AWA weekend, probably. That's what it was. It was uh, AWA. <laughs> yep, that's it. Right, folks. Ramon here is a big anime fan. Yeah. That, I don't know. If you, if you heard me talking about all the, the Dragon <laughs> Balls. Yeah, and, and Dragon Ball is... Or Dragon Ball Z in particular is my favorite anime. It's not the best. I know it's not the best. It's just one that I grew up with. I have a lot of nostalgic with nostalgia with it. So like that's why it's my personal favorite. I see plenty all the time that I'm like, oh, that's easily better than Dragon Ball Z. But you know, I always just come back to it, and it's basically the Star Wars of anime. So I mean, like, I, I get it. It's like, yeah, I mean, like that's how I feel. It's Star Wars is ingrained in our culture you know you you can watch a, a regular show and they may reference star wars here and there um there's merchandise that still comes out there's um there are video games that st- and this is like before the new ones like merchandise video games uh tv shows you know like it just there's always something star wars out there and the same is with dragon ball like before dragon ball or, or Dragon Ball Super came out two years ago. There were games still coming out, merchandise, you know, action figures, card games. Like it, so, so I gotta ask this: uh, How do you feel about GT? <laughs> oh man. Okay, so I am what you would call a GT apologist. All right, <laughs> I I like GT. I really do. And that is not a popular answer. <laughs> but, and I I will say to people, people, people have all their, and like, I'm, I'm very informational. All right. So like when, when people come at me with these stupid things, like Toriyama had nothing to do with it. He said, it's not canon. It's like, he never said that. Show me where he said that. You know, <laughs> he, Toriyama dealt with key plot elements and like key storyboard and character design like he had his hand in it he had as much hand in gt as he does in super like yeah like a different guy uh toyotaro is the guy that um runs the super anime or the super manga does a great job by the way um there's (laughs) okay there are some parts where i'm like oh god dang it you you missed the nail you missed the nail but other parts uh, is like you know this is pretty good yeah i i love super the anime Super the manga uh, has moments where I'm just like, why did he do that? I mean, he, his art is great. And, um, you know, like, mo- most of it is still good. But there's just things. I don't know if you kept up with the manga, but I'm sure, like, it's almost become a meme at this point. How Master Roshi went Ultra Instinct. <laughs> like, and that's how Goku learned it was by watching uh, Roshi fight Jiren. Like it, that was a weird choice on their part. Yeah, like I, I laughed, <laughs> but oh boy. But um, okay, but but you were talking about GT. Um, okay, let me let me say this about GT right quick. For anyone that has it, that for for the people that blindly hate GT, and you've heard how bad it is, you know, give it a chance. Now. The problem with giving it a chance is you're going to have to go through about 15 to 20 episodes that aren't great. 
I know. That's asking a lot. I mean, it's just <laughs> what? Uh, half? I know. Of it's like team. two two to three episodes are good. You're just like, oh, I just got done watching Dragon Ball Z. Okay, this is the first few episodes of GT. Okay. And then everyone hates Pan, and Pan ruins the show, and the show tries to be Dragon Ball, and it doesn't work. They don't do Dragon Ball properly. They try to make everyone weaker. There's false sense of urgency. Like they're they're fighting people and they're they're losing to these people. And it's like you could go Super Saiyan at any time, but they just don't. And you're just like, I, I want these people to be more powerful. But they they just won't do it. That, that's one thing that bothered me about GT was the fact it's like I'm watching it, I'm like, Goku, you can still go Super Saiyan. Super <laughs> yeah. Saiyan two, or even Super Saiyan three in your form. Yeah. And you, they just you don't can like bench press a planet. The fuck are you struggling for? Yeah, and then it and then it's like, oh, they're about to lose. I'm like, oh, okay, now I'll go Super Saiyan. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then another thing that bothers me, okay, Goku is stronger than he's ever been in his base form. Like, don't all he's a kid, but he's extremely powerful. Probably even stronger than he was at the, at the end of Z because he was training with Oob. Yeah. So he doesn't necessarily like need to go Super Saiyan to beat you know the the strongest of the strong. How come Trunks can keep up with him, and how come Pan can keep up with him? <laughs> so yeah, yeah I I'm an apologist, but I know it has its flaws, and I can complain about GT as long as I can praise it. Because like there's a lot of things that I like, but there's they made a lot of missteps. But... Well, as 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 far as TFS, uh, just summed it up with uh, Vegeta one time. Power levels are bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I love those guys. By the way, oh, they um, I they have a a D and D campaign that I watched a good bit of, like, but like the episodes are too long, and it, uh, like I just couldn't keep watching it. But like, it's really entertaining. Yeah, I I'm I'm behind on a lot of my uh D and D stuff. Like I'm behind on Critical Role, TFS at the Table, The Unexpectables, and like five others that I used to watch very very much. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh god, I'm busy because I'm yeah. doing this more. I'm writing for this more, and so on and so forth. Oh uh, yeah. Speaking of which, yeah. um, is there something in the campaign that you wish to know as a player, or you think your character would know? Well, my character would like to know where his dad is. <laughs> um, I would like to know where his dad's been, <laughs> I guess. I mean, from what you've heard and what you've been able to investigate while you were in Loria is that he, what you heard or got from Dr. Fiddlesticks was that he just appeared one day and he was ranting at the, uh, the man at the front desk about wanting books about the philosopher's stone yeah I, I guess um um i guess okay me as a player would like to ask you um this philosopher's stone i don't know if you'll give me the answer is it extremely similar to what i'm gonna have or what they did in full metal full metal alchemist or i guess if i'm asking it poorly um like no no you're not asking it poorly um my problem is, do I want to answer it? Oh, okay. okay. If, if you have to think about it, then don't worry about it. Because <laughs> I'm like, like, oh man, if I answer it this way, then that gives away everything. Okay. But if I'll, I okay. don't answer it, it this way, then it's just more confusing. <laughs> okay. Right, don't worry about it. I don't, I don't want any spoilers that are like too, uh, too story breaking. Um, I guess if there's another player question... What exactly will this uranium do to me if I keep holding on to it? Well, eventually Mute will start losing his hair. Literally. Because right. um, Mute kind of doesn't care. He 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 has it and he feels like it's not a good thing to have, but he's just like, yeah, I still want to hold on to it. <laughs> um, basic radiation poisoning at first, and then it, it will progressively get worse and worse until, you know, death. <laughs> okay. Because while it is sealed, it is not sealed in a proper container. Yeah. 
All still, right. I still don't know why you decided to go back and ask for it. I I did it because I wanted to get away with it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> that's all it boils down to. You're you like, don't you get do uranium. It. I was like, huh. I want to sneak back and get uranium. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so I want to explain something about my characters and the purpose of like mute his little evolution. Um, the the group that I was with, I'll say the, the one I said two years ago, where the guy showed up at the house. I played a paladin. He was lawful good. He followed all the rules, and this this was the first session that like I actually. I'll consider my actual real first session because every other one was about three games and then whatever. So I, you know, we, we played for a while. I was kind of bored, honestly. <laughs> I, I didn't know how to play the character. Uh, he was just the good guy. He, you know, we had like some bad character group and, you know, I, I was like, Oh, I'm not going to do that thing that you're doing. I'm just Mr. Goody two shoes. And I just, didn't like it. I I sat most of the time just like uh what you know had to think strategically. So when it came to my next character with the guy yeah, that I do the games with on Saturdays, I wanted to have a chaotic neutral character. And this character is insane. <laughs> like I almost wish we could film the things that I do. <laughs> I've, I've always wanted like just version or it to be seen out there because like this character imagine the Leroy Jenkins of the group <laughs> oh god yeah like so he he's the character that you know the players are just like why did you do that like they like they get mad at me occasionally but at the same time I get them out of trouble you know like I'm I'm the type of guy that will I will um, rob a store clerk in disguise while dressed as someone I see on the street and then go to another store clerk, point at the guy that I dressed as and be like, that guy still stuff. You should get him. <laughs> Convince them to chase after him and I'll steal from that guy. Like he's, he's a weird <laughs> character like that. <laughs> oh. Okay. So this with mute, I wanted something in between. Like I wanted a... A good character that's not too crazy, but I still wanted to have a crazy personality. So that's why I made him a jokester, but I felt like making him a lecher would just give him like that little something extra to um, give him a little more personality. So you made a jokester mixed with uh, Moroku. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. By the way, I don't think uh, Ragnus' character will ever forgive you for asking essentially a scion of his goddess for her panties. Well, he's going to have to get over it because I'll probably ask again. <laughs> if you run into it, another one ever again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I said, they, they are a dying species. Yeah. I mean, I'll, if I see one, I'll try to distract him to look somewhere else. <laughs> oh... Speaking of, like, uh, moving forward with the campaign uh, and the rarities of things, we are technically slowly reaching the end of, uh, I guess, book one of this whole charade of a campaign that we have. Oh, nice. Uh, I've decided to call it the Echoes of Alathara, dealing with Mizuki and Ragnus' past. Um, but what do you feel like you should see or have resolved before the end of this adventure and before we begin the next part huh um i don't know uh, the slaves were freed right a good chunk of them yeah okay um i guess mute would be happy with that um i'm assuming the philosopher's stone will be later down the road um i don't know I i've pretty much got like once this arc ends i've got two arcs in front of me that i have to choose as to which one goes next the first uh -huh. arc deals with uh your character and his backstory and the philosopher's stone 
Nice. The other arc deals with Tulip's backstory and her search for her father's uh, legendary pen flute. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm glad you, you brought her up. She is such a mysterious character to me. <laughs> there are these secrets, and I I feel like I didn't catch on to the fact that she was that secretive until um the bonfire episode where the episode the session where like she was getting asked asked the questions and she asked them as vague as possible and i was like oh there's more to her than than what i expected oh yeah tulips uh, oblivious as she puts herself but she's actually very perceptive of everything yeah and she just some things she lets pass by like she doesn't care other things she's like ah i'm gonna use this later yeah and then Uh, when it comes to sharing her own past she's pretty hush about most of it yeah oh also like to anyone i I don't think i've mentioned this in game but um my character although flirts with women when he sees them he won't flirt with party members because i feel like that would just make things too complicated or could be IRL uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of what, what I've always thought of it as like Brock in Pokemon, like we'll flirt with every girl that's around, but like he didn't flirt with Misty or May, you know. Oh man, I haven't thought of Pokemon in forever. Yeah. Man, I, I think about Pokemon all the time. I Okay, I'm one of those guys that watch the show for an embarrassingly long amount of time. <laughs> and and by embarrassingly long amount of time, I mean, like, uh, what what season was like? I didn't see Diamond and Pearl like that anime, aside from like a few episodes here and there. But I saw everything before it, and then watched a great deal after it. Like I've seen Black and White and um, a few episodes of X and Y. Like I <laughs> I still kind of watch Pokemon. <laughs> But I haven't watched it in like a year, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every now and then I go back and I watch uh, uh, Soul Eater, Cowboy Bebop, Trigun. Oh, man. Gundam Wing. Can, can we just talk about anime for a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here goes another thing. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you caught it since you said Outlaw Star, but um, my father's name being Katarl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, maybe he'll catch that. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of stared at it when you first gave it to me for a moment. I'm like, I should have seen that coming. <laughs> but yeah, well, yeah. So as far as, you know, with with the this act coming cl- to a close soon, and the next ones being, I'm having to essentially a coin flip between yours and Tulip's to see which right. one goes next, because Kiata is essentially there for Tulip's backstory, Alvar was has been there for Regnus's. Um uh, there for Regnus's, and then there's yours. So yeah. I'm kind of the guy by myself. I, I was the guy that just showed up on the second <laughs> episode. <laughs> I'm here. Name's mute. How's it going? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How you doing, ladies? Uh, yeah, yeah. Who wants to shake my hand? Who wants to who wants to see me in, in the spotlight? <laughs> uh but yeah. Um I have a very fun thing planned for the final session of this arc. Nice. Um, I have a I have a question, a campaign question. Mm-hmm. Okay, so do are a lot of decisions you make um, altered due to decisions that we make as characters? Kind of okay. Um, we'll we'll say. In the sense that since I am now using, like, the powers of light as a monk, mm-hmm. if if you were initially like, oh, you know, there's probably going to be a bunch of undead, and now you're like, oh, no, now undead will be too easy. Maybe I won't use undead. Like, things of that nature. No, no. I, I haven't changed that, actually. Okay. Uh, um, this part of the campaign actually deals a lot with undead creatures. Um, as the players, yourself included, found out that... Uh, one of the individuals pulling the strings behind everything is known as Countess uh, Valentia. And she yeah. is a vampire. Ooh, vampire. And Can't wait to meet her. 
she is a very powerful vampire mm-hmm. um and also was the one that manipulated uh Regnus's mind into getting the first shard of Alathara for her ooh um but yeah, so that's the reason why, you know, every now and then you guys run into a vampire spawn or some undead or such. It was because it was based, this part of the campaign is actually based around that. Uh, All right. The corruption that she has left behind from her actions and so on, as well as the corruption from being near shards of Alathara, which, you know, Mizuki's got two of them in her, so. Oh. Huh. Okay. You know, right. you weren't there for that, but yeah, she uh, she <laughs> ate uh, a cultist that tried to use the shards to command her, and she ate the shards as well. <laughs> nice. Uh, what was I just thinking? Uh, my my brain did a thing. Arg. Brain fart. Yeah, I, I I had it right there. Arg. Well, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> oh boy, it's gone. I'm I'm sure it'll pop back up, and it'll probably pop up when um when the session ends. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, speaking of ending, I believe we have eaten up enough time for this ah. interview, at least for you know most of my questions. Do you have anything else you would like to ask before we end? Um. Well, let's see. Um. <laughs> I remember what I was gonna say, but now it's not the time to say it. I guess. Um. But I guess if there's any questions. Uh, will I get another chance with the Lady of the Forest? Yes. Sweet. <laughs> okay, I'll, so I'll I'll slip in just the last thing I was gonna say. It, it wasn't too big of a thing, but I was gonna say me as a player knows not to mess with a vampire. Mute on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby, how about you give me a kiss? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, just like with the succubus. Like, I knew not to do it, but Mute I had to play the character. <laughs> Mute on the other hand saw, oh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> how you doing, legs? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the, the hell knight behind you is like, oh, God. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, if you were gonna die by that, I was I was not going to feel bad. By the way, <laughs> I mean I would have expected it. Like that, that's the thing I I like making that gamble. So like, is the DM gonna kill me here, <laughs> or is he gonna let me live? Lived by a hair. Yeah, I I'm not twenty. The the seduction rolls. I I was kind of hoping that. Uh, like she just wouldn't do anything to me and oh no she was gonna keep you alive <laughs> everyone else not so much but you yeah you were gonna live you were gonna be her toy for a good while <laughs> oh such cruel cruel creatures yeah uh but yeah so that's the end of the interview thank you everyone for joining us once again I'm Ian the part time dungeon master this was my guest Mute Who, also known as Bomin Ramen, who you can, Ramen. Find... Check out. <laughs> you can find a link to his channel down below, as well as just, you know, comment on his videos talking about how Provolone is nowhere nearly as good as smoked Gouda. Hey, yeah, that's good. That's a good cheese. <laughs> oh. All right, everyone. Catch you next time. Bye.